Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, what? We're starting? Fuck. Matt, I told... Aren't we doing it at 10? Oh, or... I'm in the middle of my workout. I'm in the middle of my workout, man. Ah, uh, you already hit start, huh? We have to start the class. I got five... I got five minutes. Three minutes? Matt. Matt, Matt, Matt. What's up, Evan? How you doing? Evan B? Big Boss 284, how you doing? S Slack, how you doing? Nikki's Adventures is in the chat. The most beautiful woman in the world. Daniel Johnson, yeah, 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 yeah. Elmaz doing lifeguard duties. What you doing, man? You getting getting a suntan? Seriously, prodigal. Matt, why? I'm just barely cleaning up. <sighs> barely cleaning up. I don't know why he started this thing way early. Uh, do I ever do close calls and crashes related specifically to slow speed stuff? Christopher Clark, that's a uh, very good question. Uh, the only real slow speed uh, uh, crashes, I guess you could say, would be uh, somebody just uh, tipping over and falling on their bike, uh, maybe doing a U-turn. Typically, people don't want to share that kind of stuff because it's mostly a uh, single person. Uh, that you can still find some of it, but uh, I believe a lot of people don't want to share that because it's literally by themselves. It's embarrassing. And if it's a car's fault or if it's some random gravel or some random thing in a corner, people have no problem sharing that. But that's a, that's a very good question because that does happen and I want to prevent that for you guys. So I will do some research. I will look it up and uh, I'll find out some common problems that happen during slow speed stuff. Now, uh, Jerry Palladino, the motor man, does a lot of good stuff when it comes to that. So check him out. He probably covers a little bit of that. Oh, we got to start. Oh, Matt. Matt, hi. Oh, I'm doing push ups, bro. Uh, uh, just getting some push ups done. Guys, I don't know why Matt started this video. I don't know why he started all this stuff. I was doing all the push-ups. I, I, I just did 5,000 of them right now. But anyways, uh, we're going to be jumping into more motorcycle close calls and crashes. I, I need to get out of the gym. Uh, yeah, rookies, can you can you, can you you uh, wipe up all this? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, guys. Whew. Let me go ahead and grab one of my drinks. Let me go ahead and grab one of my drinks. It's almost like it's fake or something. Anyways. Guys, we're going to be going over uh, some Moto Madness stuff. I got three videos for you. I didn't even look at them. It said 10 months, one year ago, three months. I don't even know. I don't know if these are old. I don't know if these are new. But the thing is, Matt should be on the ball, even though he started this a little bit early. And we're going to be going over these things. And you'll find me some new videos if we've already seen this stuff. Guys, 
Uh, real quick note, uh, crew members, this is a little crew meeting right now. Uh, crew members, we just got uh, an announcement from Amazon. They're the ones that are producing these videos. Uh, not videos. <laughs> I'm producing these videos. They're the ones uh, making these T-shirts, these, these uniform shirts that if you're going to be in the crew lounge, Highly recommend wearing them. Uh, rookies, you need to wear slacks with them, you know, tuck in the belt. See, I, I got my gym shorts and everything on. Uh, everybody else, crew members and above, you can wear shorts as long as the inseam on your shorts do not go longer than four inches. So let's go ahead and check out what everybody's doing in the classroom. Let's see how the class, class is going. going. Making, making sure, sure we hit everybody. everybody. Or not hit everybody. Not on it today. Not on it today. Clean up these burritos. Or these tacos that look like burritos. Guys, make sure you sign in. Click that like button to sign in. Let's get to 100 likes before we start. Everyone say hi to the squirrel on the leaf over there. Uh, guys, we're, we're doing amazing things here. We have the best damn online motorcycle community ever. I'm going to actually double check. Let's see how many people are in the firehouse right now. 3,942. The Discord is the firehouse. This is what you see. We have the crew lounge, which you just saw. We have the classroom parking lot section, all those fancy schmancy things. I'm going to go ahead and click that link I just shared right here. What does it look like? Let's take a look at it. 3,942 members inside the firehouse. 905 of them are online. Guys, when I say we have the best damn online motorcycle community in the world because online is the world soon it will be the galaxy i actually mean it i don't think there's another discord i don't think there's another community i don't think there's another forum or anything where you have four thousand members and 905 of them are chit chatting away i don't think so i don't think so so guys this is absolutely free click that accept invite in the chat and let's get it going so 64 likes let's see if we can get 100 likes before we really start it. Benjamin Hub upgraded. You just got promoted to veteran crew member. Woo! Welcome to the veteran crew status. Dude, that's awesome. You don't have to clean the bathrooms. Only rookies have to clean the bathrooms. Uh, crew members, try your best to scrub as much of you of whatever it is that you left in the toilet as you can. But here's the thing: rookies got to clean bathrooms. That's just the way it is. You guys, you know, you have small mustaches until you get beautiful beards, especially the first month. So make sure you guys check it out. Uh, click the uh, link in the chat. Let's get some memberships. Let's get it going. Who's gonna be the first one? The goal is 20 today. But let's go ahead and start in this. We have nice 69 likes. Uh, we got about 100 people in the classroom. Go ahead and eat up the leftovers. Uh, crew members, don't let them know that those are from yesterday. Just, just let them let them eat it. Uh, we'll get it. We'll get it out of the, the firehouse that way. So I just want to say hi real quick to some of the people here. I, I I have to give it back to you guys. I mean, you guys are amazing. Steven Bustos, Christopher Clark, Rosemary Eslack, Peter K, Alex Afonin, Andrew Santoyo, man, Nikki, of course. <laughs> Nikki, what's up? How you doing? Are you single? Yeah, yeah, you're not? Okay, well, you're with me anyways. Stantler16, once again, you guys are insane. The Prodigal Stranger, Daniel Johnson, Woo, Jay Bushing, Near Future, how you doing? Johnny Ray said, Peter K, Stumpy Fingers, Trevor Taylor, what is up? Russell Heideman, how you doing? Steven Bustos, Nitwit, but spelled backwards, how you doing? Ooh, the power of the beard from S Slack. Guys, a lot of cool stuff. A lot of cool stuff's happening. Ant CJR Vincent H96, welcome to the Discord. Uh, the whole point of these live streams are to basically create a virtual classroom I, th I don't i think everybody understands that uh we're using a little bit of imagination to have a little bit of fun but this way we can go ahead and get into some actual educational content we're utilizing moto madness we're utilizing all these different uh motorcycle crash compilation resources and that's why i look at it the resources daniel cohen welcome to the crew nice little mustache man welcome welcome love having some daniels in the crew it's the best name ever but I'm utilizing these guys uh, as, as a resource, and they produce something that's very beneficial for us. We're going to utilize it, and uh, it's it's very good. It's very good. So that's what we're going to do. And so big shout-out to Moto Madness today. Um, but the point of these classrooms is to get some feedback and to get you guys you know, talking in the chat. I want you guys thinking. We're supposed to be thinking writers. We're supposed to be smart writers. I mean, that's kind of what it says you know, right there. 
What does it say? What does it say? It says smart rider. DDFM crew smart rider. The whole point is be a smart rider. We're supposed to be thinking, ask why, why, why. Every single crash that we see, I want you guys to ask yourself three different whys. Move backwards. If it's a low side, why is it a low side? That's the first why. You know, uh, loss of tra traction on one of the tires. Okay, cool. That's one why. But why did that person have a loss of traction on one of the tires? I don't know which one, but which one? Why would that happen? Well, did you see the, the front brake? Did you see the lean angle? Did you see gravel? Did was a guy in the dirt? Okay, cool. Those are all whys. Now, let's go even further. How did he get in the dirt? How did he get in the gravel? How did he go wide? And possibly it's going to be speed, maybe ego, maybe... You know, not paying attention, white zone. Those are three whys, and those are three things that we can train on. Every single why that we have, those are things that we can work on. And that's what I want you guys to do. I want you guys to be smart riders and figure it out. So, uh, Rene De Young, hopefully I said that right. Oh, by the way, the three whys, everyone comes up with different ones. That's the beauty of it. I want to see it in the chat so we can all figure out, you know, if, if three people give three different whys, that's nine different whys. Those are nine different things we can work on. You know what I mean? All right, so Dana, question. Slow turns and U-turns with automatic uh yeah uh, i'm from the netherlands thanks uh so like a dct type of thing so slow speed turns you really got to work on that uh throttle control since you're not really using the friction zone to slow you down so throttle control and if it's slow speed stuff use a little bit of rear brake to slow you down a little bit if you're having trouble if you're if you're giving it like 0.5 percent throttle and you're going too fast give yourself about five percent maybe even less than that of rear brake and you're going to slow yourself down and there you go you can start working with the rest of the stuff so utilize your rear brake as your friction zone i definitely recommend using that and then even if you do have a friction you do have a clutch use your rear brake sometimes to help you out too i carry shopping with a bag on my back just after 100 miles carrying 15 kilograms on my back starts to get a little sore how do i stop getting sore shoulders so near future what i do when i'm riding and i have a backpack i loosen up the straps i make sure i have a backpack that has a chest strap that's very important. Have a chest strap that goes across. But then when I'm riding, I kind of loosen up the, the long ones. And that way the backpack is resting on my seat and not being held up on my back. So it, I have it resting on my seat. Have the chest strap nice and tight so it stays secure. But having it kind of just sit on the seat, that saves my back quite a bit. All right, guys. Uh, 80 likes, guys. We're going to start when we hit 100. I mean, we've got to have 100 people sign into class um, let's go ahead and see what the first one looks like real quick. All right, so this is what the first one's going to start looking like. It's going to be a cruiser with a, with a bat wing fairing. And more than likely in the UK, I'm going to guess uh, we're on the wrong side of the road here. <laughs> let's see if we can hit... 100 likes, we'll get it going. Uh, Rio797, Murphy, Ben Jr. 88, Mc, uh, McKay, Landon, welcome to the Discord. Guys, remember, this Discord is absolutely 100% free. I don't know why I had an accent there, but I'm having a good time. It's very early morning. It's something that I haven't done a live stream at 9 in the morning, but uh, we're going to get going pretty soon. Only issue I've had with it is loses, uh, it throws off my balance when stopping at junks. Yeah, yeah. So it, uh, if you're going to have massive issues, look into possibly getting some saddlebags or a tank bag or uh, a bag that you can put on the on the rear on the seat, stuff like that. 93 likes. We got one new member, guys. Remember the goal is 20 new members today. We got one new one. It's always good to have members in the lounge, drinking all the Kill Cliff CBDs and eating all of my food. But uh, let's just get going. Who cares? Okay, that's not nice. Let's skip it. Oh, maybe not. All right, fine, whatever. You f an idiot. Just keep going, dude. Downshift. Downshift. Whoa. Whoa. That scared me up, did that? And I know the camera won't show it, but that were a lot closer than it looked. You notice how everybody says that? It's a lot closer than it looks. I have nothing against uh, this person at all. But, I mean, the whole excuse of it looks closer than it looks. So, I... I don't see that's what I don't like. I I, I, I don't even want to I barely even want to show this. You know what? I'm not. 
Uh, I'm just gonna tell you guys right now, it's a blind, blind intersection. The car couldn't see him, he couldn't see him. We're gonna panic break right here, lose control. Lost a little control. Uh, whatever. I, I, I don't like the fact that that word was on screen. Sorry about that. He's gonna complain the whole time too. Heard it? Yep. Pedestrian. Okay. The bus is in the intersection when it's yellow, therefore it is, it's legal. Is it safe? Maybe it's not safe enough for this bus to slam the brakes with the kids or whoever. Maybe there's no kids. I don't know. Maybe it's unsafe for the vehicle to stop. There's not enough total stopping distance. He probably knows his braking uh, capabilities and decided to go through a yellow light, which is completely legal. Maybe did situation awareness notice that nobody was in the intersection at all and was able to make this turn or make this uh, uh, maneuver safely. So I don't see that there's an issue. If it, guys, if you are coming up to a yellow light, and the reason why I pause it on this frame is because they are in the intersection and it is a yellow right there. If there's ever a point in time where you're coming up to an intersection and it turns yellow on you, boom, you guys need to go on the red stage. Uh, if it turns yellow on you, you go on the red stage and you're either applying braking pressure, progressive braking pressure, or you're deciding to go through the intersection as safe as possible and evade anything if you have to. So if it's unsafe for you to stop, then you need to just either go through it or be really damn good at stopping and you're probably going to stop halfway through the intersection. And that's that's basically that's basically what that is, okay? So guys, remember what I asked of you at the beginning of this. Ask the three whys, okay? Why, why, and why. Okay, so the effect, the thing that happened here is the bus went through the intersection when it was yellow. This could be applied to you as a motorcyclist. We're just utilizing the bus because we have this right here. We have this as our example. This could be the side of a motorcycle in the intersection. Pretend it's a motorcycle on that front tire. There it is. Boom. Done. Why did the bus go into the intersection right here on a yellow? Maybe, maybe they weren't paying attention. Maybe. Okay. Well, why weren't they paying attention? You know, keep asking. Keep asking these questions. That one's for you guys. Let's move on. That's just way too loud. Are we going to... What? Garen, yeah, guys, you have DVR also. You know you guys can rewind. You can rewind, and then you can uh, you can click that little live button, and it'll take you back to where we're at. Yeah, it's too loud. It's just, it's, and then he gets upset. He was in the intersection. Wanderlust Prime, welcome to the crew. Not a rookie, but a crew member. Welcome, welcome. That's two new members today. I'm, I'm excited. Just barely started today. Ooh. <sighs> Guys. I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. This bus driver should not be doing some crazy things, but here's the thing. Yeah, okay, we're going to look at that car, but look at the bus. 
the bus made the lane. So I, I understand the the dude with the arrow being a little freaked out. It's like, oh, it's a big thing. It's a big thing coming out at me. I, I get it. I really do. And if you have to swerve, go ahead and do that. If you feel the need, go ahead and do that. But this is really a non-issue. There's absolutely nothing that the bus driver did wrong in the situation. Maybe pulling out in front of a bike, you know, but, ah, oh, geez. All right. See, then look at that. I pushed the horn so hard the housing moved down and I couldn't shift. All right. Watch out. Okay, brakes. No, tur uh, turning right, turning right, turning right. Okay, look around, look around. Car stopped, car stopped. Okay, why is the car stopped? Turning, turning, turning. Whoa. No. Oh, this is Hef. F520, man. This is, I know where this is. I know this road. I drive this road. I ride this road all the time. This is Houghton. This is Houghton in Tucson. Uh, car is making a right turn. This is like, uh, this is like next to Walmart. Walmart is a little bit that way. Uh, there's a neighborhood to the right. This car is making a right turn. So if a car is able to make a right turn onto something, that's an intersection. You can't see who's in that intersection. You can barely see right now. Actually, I could see like a black little dot unless that's the let's go. Let's take a look. I Know this spot You can barely see it. I know this spot and it's right on the crest of a hill. It's kind of hard to see um, But I know that there's intersections here and this is where you need to start realizing. Okay, here's the thing This is Tucson Suda. Here's the thing is like if a car is turning right into a spot and there's a neighborhood, you could see the houses, more than likely there's a possibility of somebody coming out of that spot. You can see the car right there. You can actually see the car right there. Okay, there's a little black spot. Right there is when you notice it. So you need to start applying the brakes. More than likely this car, if you gave them that room, they're going to go into that turn lane. That's probably what they're going to try to do. The car couldn't see you. You couldn't see them. This is a natural thing. It happens to car drivers. It happens to humans. It happens all the time. S-Lock, exactly. Vision issues. So let's go through a little thought experiment on this one, guys. We're going to do the three Ys. I want to start seeing this in the chat, okay? Okay, so I'm going to give you the product. I'm going to give you the effect, okay? Cause and effect, okay? So we can actually just change, let's just change it because it's the most common thing with cars, transportation, motorcycles. We learn in the MSF uh, a factor. So uh, a factor is what we see. A, pos a possible factor is something we can't see, but is more than likely going to be the thing. So this is a path of travel violation. It's a person turning left in front of us. Why did this person turn left in front of us? Why did this person turn left in front of us? We're not even going to talk about, you know, braking. We're not going to talk about swerving. We're not going to talk about, you know, what we could do to, to get around this hazard. But why did this car, we have to start from there. Why did this car turn in front of us? You know, in fact, let me go ahead and pull up my Excel spreadsheet. Why did this car turn in front of us? So why did this car turn in front of us? So the impacted goal here is gonna be the car turning in front of us. So what's the first why? Why, 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 why did the car turn in front of us? Line of sight, car couldn't see bike behind, or couldn't see bike behind our car. So why is this happening? Let's put a uh, line of sight. And then I'll put car couldn't see bike. All right. So why why was there a line of sight problem? Why was there a line of sight problem? 
See, this type of stuff, you, you guys did ask if, like how to go through a cause mapping uh, and everything. So why couldn't the, the car see us? This is right before the incident right here. Why do you think the car couldn't see us? So we, we figured out that the car turns in front of us because he couldn't see us. So why couldn't the car turn or why couldn't the car see us? No line of sight. You can't see the bike. Driver couldn't see the rider behind the turning car. So it's pretty, it's, it's, it's as simple as that, right? So he couldn't see. So let's take a look. So car couldn't see bike. So why couldn't the car see bike? Uh, there was a car in the LOS of the turning car. So there was a car in the line of sight of the turning car. Okay, so that's that's another why. So that's what that's what happened here. That's what happened here. So let's go back even further. So that's what happened here. So what can we, what can we do now? You know, why was there a car in the line of sight of the turning car? So like, why, how can we do this? How can we fix that? How can we fix that? Slide in kind of the road and car obstructing view. So that's that's another good that's another good thing. So like it's not just always this. So we can actually like build one down here, and and be like, okay, well the line of sight car couldn't see, and then what you said, slight incline on the road. So we can easily just do this, and then do slight incline in the road. This is called cause mapping. So this is this is the effect right here, the impacted goal. Okay, so it could be an impact to safety, environment, customer, all these other things. So why did it happen? Why did it happen? It could also be, you know, why the car couldn't see us. It could be the slight incline of the road. So there's always another possibility. Locked its vision, lane position combined with car. Slow down, maybe slow down, observe more. So we can actually put how do we prevent this? How? It could be slow down prep for possible intersection so we just went through a little process okay line of sight so the car couldn't see us so remember always work backwards so this is the problem this is the impacted goal this we want to continue straight without having anybody get in front of us that's the that's the impacted goal that's the problem so we we go back even further so we got Linus, so the impacted goal was a car wanting to come out in front of us, or not wanting, but came out in front of us. Okay, why did that happen? So why did this happen? So we have to go back. Line of sight, so we talked about line of sight. So line of sight, car couldn't see bike. Well, why couldn't the car see the bike? We talked about there was a line of sight problem with the car blocking the other car, the turning car. Also a slight incline in the road could have caused it. So we can actually branch off of that if we wanted to. So how do we prep for that? Slow down, prep for a possible intersection. How do we know it's a possible intersection? How do we know it's a possible intersection? You can see the car, you can see people waiting, you see the turn signal, you see an intersection over here, you see the car, car with the right turn, they're going to go into the neighborhood. It's a possible intersection. So therefore, the simplest thing that we can think of, the simplest thing that we can think of when it comes to how to mitigate an intersection like this with possible line of sight problems with other vehicles is to recognize that there is an intersection, so just be ready. How do we be ready? You know, why? Why would you need to be ready? How do we do that? Well, go into orange stage when you start to see brake lights and you start to see somebody with a turn signal. You start to see housing with, with uh, possible intersections. Go into orange stage, get prepped and ready for that emergency braking or that swerving. So this is all those things. Now, how do we mitigate the line of sight issue? We already talked about that quite a bit, which is to position yourself with very good following distance and to uh, position yourself in, in where he is right now. So this is actually a good position for him to, to be seen and whatnot. But what I like to do is I like to move right. I like to move left, especially if there's an intersection coming up so I can see who's over there. I want the best vision. That's It's as simple as that. You go through the process of trying to figure out why, 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 why. And you start to work with it. So uh, I do have an Excel spreadsheet. I do have that kind of stuff. So it does kind of reel me in sometimes if I do my research. But for the most part, if you see this and do this a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, you can start doing it without having to use the uh, Excel spreadsheet. You can actually use 
post-it notes. You get a post-it note and you put it on the wall and say, car turn left in front of me. The next post-it note could be why. The next post-it note could be why. The next post-it note could be why. And that's all you have to do. That's really all you have to do. And we had a nice little dip in viewership. Uh, that's the thing, guys. That's the thing. We lost uh, some people out of the class. We lost some people out of the class because it's boring shit. It's boring to talk about cause mapping. It really is. It is so boring. So I try to make it simple for everybody. And it's like going to orange. I'm color coding everything. I'm a firefighter. I need to color code stuff or I can't pay attention to it. So that's the thing. Just as soon as you see like an intersection, go into orange stage, get prepped and ready for a swerve, get prepped and ready for a break if you have to. If, if nothing happens, kudos to you. Go back into yellow stage and have a good time. Zone back in completely to the right. Start scanning some more. That's, that's all you have to do. That's all you have to do. That's all I want my students to do. I don't want my students having to do cause mapping. I don't want them to have to do all that type of stuff. If you want to take it to the next level and you want to mentor and teach other riders, then yes, you should go to this cause mapping. You should go to root cause analysis. And But I mean, at the end of the day, you really don't have to. Exoslaya369, how you doing, man? So, yeah, I, 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 it's like I look at that road, I'm like, man, 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 that's insane. All right, so right here we have a lane splitting. I'm not going to go into depth again. I'm not going to go into crazy depth of cause mapping. We're going to do like we normally do, keeping it simple. And we're going to talk about yellow, orange, black, or all these other things. Hey, 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 Alexa, stop. A little bit fast. Car is going to cut in front of you. There it is. Yeah, Garrett, normal people think spreadsheets are a little bit boring. I, I love it. I love how it organizes my thoughts. Um, so with what we know, ask yourself why 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 and what we can do differently here guys if you like what we do if you if you like if you like the training you like the teaching you like all that stuff think about supporting think about becoming a crew member you know i got ddfm crew right here guys think about doing that's two dollars a month you get a mustache next to your name you get all these cool emojis during the live streams during the class and if you're a part of the discord you get special uh, crew perks you get the crew lounge food and drinks camping gamer section voice channels all that cool stuff, the crew bulletin. I do share these nerdy things. I share the cause mapping. I share adult learning principles. In fact, on the crew bulletin right here, this is the crew bulletin. Okay, if you see right here, only crew members can see it. I shared ex the explanation effect why you should always teach what you learn. Um, I gave out, you know, how how do motorcyclists man manage mental tensions of risky riding? I talk about what happens. Uh, to your CCW gun if you get taken to the hospital. These are all things that I wish I could share on YouTube, um, but I just want to share it to the crew right away as soon as I can before creating a video. And that is on the Discord, and only crew members get access to that. So if you would like to be a crew member, click that join button, click that link in the chat, support the channel. Let's see if we can hit 20 today. That's 18 more. Let's get it going. But right here, I see you guys. I, I say all this stuff so because there is a delay in the stream. There is a delay in the stream, and I want you guys to get your, your answers in. Um, so James Johnson about to take my MSF course and have some buddies who are getting bikes and not taking the class. They feel they don't need it and have no previous experience. Any advice for them or for me to them? So that right there, James Johnson, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, as, a, as a coach or as an educator, you need to understand as adults uh, the adult learning principles. And one of the biggest ones that adults need to know why they need to take training. They need to understand why. It's not just know but understand. And that's what I'm doing here with these close calls and crashes. I'm trying to get, hey, this is the reality. This is what happens. Now, do you want um, – do you want uh, – I got distracted again. <laughs> Slack, do crew members get access to the crew bulletin? 
Uh, crew members do get access to the crew bulletin, so link up your YouTube, Patreon, Twitch, Nitro Booster, all that stuff. Um, adults need to know why, so I showed them these things. This is why you need to do it. Okay, so now you, now you understand why. Let's go ahead and practice. Go ahead and train. So showing them, uh, I don't want to say show them my videos. I, I, if you want to, because you have good influence over your buddies, go out and do parking lot practice. Show them what you learned compared to what they did, and if they want to be like you, then uh, that's great. So be the best you could possibly be and show them that. Be the, be the uh, advocate for training. Be the example, okay? And hopefully do it as quick as possible. That way they, they see it. They don't do anything stupid. Uh, can you share a link to your ebook? I want to buy it. Yeah, uh, Mama Ortega 96 Guys, that's the link to the ebook. but here's the thing. If you become a patron, if you become a patron, you get the ebook for free. So it's actually cheaper. It's actually cheaper if you become a patron. Uh, I will get the biggest stickers I can for my side of the top. Nice, Martin. Your boring class saved me multiple times with the repetitive training and knowledge emergency progressive breaking. Awesome, Mr. Mister. All right, let's get back into it. So... With lane splitting, uh, we have multiple factors here, okay? We have a, an actual factor of nighttime, low visibility. Okay, that, that one, is, that, there's evidence there. Lower visibility at night. I think it's common sense, uh, especially with the lights shining everywhere. You know, the lights in the, in the rear view mirror uh, and all that stuff. And then we have uh, the possible fact or the possible things that could cause some problems, especially if we remove them. But the thing is, we don't have good escape paths. We don't have good things right there. Another factor that we could be having is possible factors too fast for lane splitting, and uh, that's a big problem because if we go too fast, people can't see us. It's inattentional blindness, motion induced blindness. We have a bunch of other psychological, physiological problems that we have when it comes to driving behavior. These are all things that uh, I worry about. Um, but the main thing I want you guys to worry about is that if you lane split, always be in orange stage when you lane split. Always be in orange stage. And then when you have a big open area like this to the right, you could have a possibility of somebody going into that lane. It doesn't matter if it's a double yellow. People do it all the time. Uh, you also see the brake lights up ahead. I mean, there's just so much. There's so much information we have to take in while lane splitting that we don't have a lot of time to make really good judgments. So I like to remove as much time from my thinking process as much as much as possible by going into orange stage. When you're in orange stage, you are just covering those brakes. You're covering the clutch. You're ready to act. You're ready to do something. You're constantly scanning for escape paths. You're constantly scanning for threats because you're in a, in a very threatening situation. That's very important. Still waking up, guys. So what, what, what was this all about? Could somebody share with me about this? What, what is this all about? I don't get that. Kill Switch Queen, how you doing? Exactly. So the first instinct uh, to honk the horn, rev bomb, those are wasted movements, guys. Just completely wasted. It adds zero to your safety uh, when you do that stuff. Um, I mean, the horn might grab somebody's attention, but here's the thing. So maybe, it, okay, it adds 10% 10, 10 to your safety. But here's the thing. If you... If you swerve or you break, that adds 50 plus percent to your safety. So what what is it that you want to do? Are you going to waste your time with a 5 to 10 percent safety margin? Or are you going to, you know, use the thing that's going to actually do something for you? What's up, M Strong? How you doing? I don't. 
I don't even, I don't even, what happened there? Uh, David White, I teach in uh, California. Uh, double, double yellow lines are illegal. Yeah, they are, but I mean, people still cross them. That's the problem. It's like, at the end of the day, is it, if it's illegal, is that stopping everybody? That's not stopping everybody. I mean, they shouldn't be doing it. And then that person probably shouldn't be riding, right? The person shouldn't be riding on that. Let me know. Let me know. Okay, car's turning in front of you. Okay, okay, not a big deal. Go for the gap. There you go. Is this another non-issue? Is this another non-issue? I want to see some of that in the chat. Guys, Guys, as crew members, you get you get a lot of emojis. So, I mean, you don't even have to type in non-issue. You can just use the, the emoji non-issue. All those things. There we go. Peter K, Matt Miller, all that stuff. Woo! S slack. Yeah, yeah. Uh, two lanes merging into one right after the roundabout. The car was in front of the bike, so had the right of way. The bike tried to pass where the lanes merged. So the biker was doing something wrong. That's what I got from that. Keep seeing red truck braking. Okay. Get a good space cushion. Okay, space cushion. Line of sight, line of sight, line of sight, line of sight. Very good. Okay, increase the space cushion. Good, good, good. Brake lights. Just don't get close. Brakes, 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 brakes. You can't see anything now. Get in a different lane. Just get in a different lane when it's safe. There you go. He's looking. Get in a different lane when it's safe. No, 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 no. Okay. Giving this guy a thumbs up for his excellent driving that totally doesn't affect anyone else. Uh, whatever. Got me. Why? 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 Uh... Why? 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 Oh. Why are we doing that? It's it's funny. <laughs> but don't don't do that. But don't do that. The reason why he did that is cuz he wanted to go as a green light. He didn't do that for a funny thing. He did that to be a jerk. He did that to be a jerk. Line. There you go. Watch out, watch out, watch out! Watch out for the other cars. Dude. What? You gotta watch out for the other cars, too. So right here, what do we have? We have a huge, a huge open spot on the right. We have a huge open spot on the right. Uh, this car wants to go over here. Maybe what the car wants to get off the, the interstate or whatever, the freeway. We're, we're in a blind spot right here. We're in a blind spot right here. And then you definitely can tell this person wanted to go because this person's going slower. This person's going slower. It's like, well, I'm just going to keep going into this open lane, not looking where they need to go. So that's that's where that's happening. So when you see when you see this... So when you see this right here, this dude wants to cut over. It's like, if he could, he can make it all the way. And that's where we're going. We're going in this lane right here. The horn actually worked on that one. So it worked on that 5%. Uh, I prefer not to do anything when it comes to honking a horn, rev bombing. I choose not to do it. I choose to roll off the throttle. I choose to increase my space cushion. I choose to keep my vision open. That's what I choose to do. Um, if you choose to do this, that's... Okay, here's the thing, guys. It's fine. Go ahead and do it. Go ahead and honk. Go ahead and rev bomb. But be aware. It's a risky endeavor because you're not utilizing good primary control use. That's what that is. It's not the best solution for the problem. It is a solution for the problem. It's not the best solution for the problem. If you can swerve and you can mercy brake while honking the horn and rev bombing, go right ahead. 
But if you can't do all those things, choose one or the other. You know what I mean? Uh, hey, Dan, I want to say I'm a new viewer and I've only been riding for a week. I got a Grom as a first bike. Your vids have been great to help in identifying dangerous habits and situations to avoid from Prophet Moses Gaming. Oh, thank you for the kind words, man. I really appreciate it. I really do. Let's keep going. What's up, CRG Motors? How you doing? Thomas, dude. And real quick, that's another thing. Look at all these other cars. Look at all these other cars. You see all these other cars in line? And our, our lane is open. What have we talked about when it comes to patterns? If you see a bunch of people in a line and our lane is moving, more than likely they're going to want to come into our lane too. So once again, Orange Stage, be prepared for this type of situation. Thomas, dude. See you what later, Matt. Don't do crack, kids. Whoa, what? That's fucked up. That's fucked up. All right, I'm not gonna watch any more from you, dude. Don't care. Hey, Veggie Moto, man. If you're if you're having your own Moto Madness video dedicated to you, you're and you have a ton of close calls, you need to really check your own driving. All right. This whole video is about him. Check your driving, man. What's up, Dan the Police, man? What? Oh. Hey, it's a Chevron. All right. Three Ys, everybody. The three Ys. Uh, Garen Johnson, the what happened in the don't do crack comment, uh, it was just a transient. It was just a guy doing what he had to do. You know what I mean? It was just a guy doing what he had to do and making fun of it is... It, I, I've talked to many transients in my life. Talked to many of them. And I'm going to tell you guys right now, a lot of them are very smart. They just make a choice. What happened there? It is good advice, but... It is good advice, but to say that all transients... Basically, it, it, it's implying transients do crack. It's it's That's... All right, so what type of accident is that? What type of accident is that, guys? What kind of accident is that? You hear the scraping, you see what happened. So uh, the effect, the effect, the uh, the outcome. It's, I think it's, it's better to say the factor and outcome. I like that. I like that a lot. What's the outcome? A low side. Why is this a low side? Why did this happen? Let me know. Let me know. Let me know. Exactly, Grimbeard. Thanks, man. Um, it's a low side. We can see the speedometer. But here's the thing, we don't know if that's kilometers per hour, we don't know if that is uh, miles per hour, so we can't say speed is a definitive factor, it could be a possible factor, scraping peg, so uh, how, how, how do you scrape peg? Like how much of a lean angle do you need to scrape peg on a sport bike? Those of you that have sport bikes, I mean I guess mine is, is kind of like a sport bike, mine's like a naked bike. Um, my pegs are pretty high. If I'm scraping pegs on my bike, I'm leaning really far. So low side, what are possible causes of low sides? This is where I want you guys to have this thought process. I want you to go down that rabbit hole, everybody. What's the causes of a low side? You know, uh, traction loss. So traction loss, what causes a traction loss for uh, a, a bike? You know, too much turning, 
for the tires, too much acceleration for the tires, too much deceleration, so braking, engine braking, and all these other types of braking. So that those are the three things. What do you think, since we know those three things cause traction loss, what do you think is one of the biggest factors, one of the biggest causes of the traction loss in this video? He panicked when his board scraped too fast, too fast, had to lean hard. Remember, guys, none of their German, so kilometers per hour. Okay, so kilometers per hour. Somebody convert that to miles per hour while I'm working. Matt, get on it. Convert that to miles per hour. I don't feel like thinking right now. Too much leaned over, too much. Guys, that's the, that's the beauty of it, guys. If you share with me what it is you think, we're going down a rabbit hole. We're all going to get better and better and better. Rear tire traction loss in the and front, scraped exhaust bolt, uh, cooked the corner. Bad tires. You know, that Rene Dejong, that's, I think I said that right. Uh, that's a definite possible factor. We can't tell what the tires look like, but that's a definite possible. More than 40 degrees on the street is stupid risk anyway. Riding outside limit speed. You guys are coming up with some amazing whys. Why, 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 And a lot of those are either going to be factors or possible factors, all based off of uh, evidence that we see. So 63 kilometers per hour. Everyone's saying 40. Uh, 40, right? 40 miles per hour is that what you guys are saying so for us sure uh we don't i'm assuming it's going to be too much lean angle uh coupled with speed maybe that's my guess okay 39 40 miles per hour okay so i'm gonna say too much speed for the corner possible factor of too much speed for the corner uh too much lean angle for the bike and then how do we prevent how do we prevent too much lean angle and how do we prevent too much cornering uh speed how do we prevent the high speed and how do we prevent the lean angle? So now we did the why. We we know the outcome of a low side on a corner. We came up with a dozen possible factors and we came up with a very few actual factors because we don't have a lot of evidence with this point of view. Now we know that it's possibly too much speed for the corner, too much lean angle for the corner. What is it? Should we? What should we practice? What should we practice? Uh, so right here, S like my right my writing instructor said if you scrape your peg or boots, it is evidence of poor body positioning. Okay. So better body positioning. Uh target fixation, possibly. Uh he wants to see the answer on the floor a bit closer. <laughs> Cold tires, possibly. Slow wind, fast out rider has been caught out of line. Tire uh tries to twitch deeper into the turn, loses it. Okay. Very good. I love this stuff, guys. So all these things that you guys are saying is very, very good, very important. There's no wrong answers. I want you guys to think, 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 think. Set up the corner properly from Spoily 62. So slow look, press, and roll is going to help you out. Maybe intermediate advanced technique of trail braking could help you out. Proper body position, keeping the bike more upright, leaning a little bit more in. Slowing down a lot, you're not even going to have to need lean angle. You know what I mean? So there's all these different things. So the thing that we can take away from this, the thing that we can practice when we go through these types of thing, uh, corners and stuff is, okay, well, I need to make sure that I approach my corners at the appropriate speed for my level. And I also need to practice my uh, body positioning and braking. You know, I might want to look into trail braking if I start doing these things. So guys, this is the why you need to do it because we see this. So why do we need to practice? Um... Why do we need to practice our cornering? Why do we need to practice our slow look, press, and roll? This is why right here. And that is the point of an after action review is to dissect what we can and then be like, okay, well, this is the common factor. This is the common thing that I see. It looks like speed is, is typically a factor in motorcycle crashes and body position looked a little bit off. So I'm gonna go ahead and practice those really well, but man, look at all these possible factors that we have. Cold tires, PSI, uh, tire damage, maybe uh, braking, all these different things. Okay, well, I'm gonna double check these also, just in case, you know what I mean? Uh, hey, Dan, you have mentioned both YouTube crew and Patreon. What is the best way to support? Uh, YouTube, you're gonna get all the emojis and get all the cool things. You're gonna get the member-only chat tomorrow. Uh, Patreon, uh, we're going to have some really cool things coming up. But right now, if you join Patreon, you're going to get the ebook for free. So that's that's what you're going to get right now. Oh, 
I like that, David. That's a that's a total control thing, isn't it, though? Let's watch that again. What causes that? What causes that? What does that what does that look like? What is that what is that? That was almost a high side. I'll make this one a little bit easier. We'll move on to the next one after this. Uh possible low side, regain traction, having a disruption in the bike, disruption in the center of gravity, almost a high side, regains traction, bike centrifugal forces, uh cause it to keep going straight, catches itself. The bike literally was like, oops, I'm gonna fall. Wait, no, never mind, I got it. Let's keep going. That's basically what happened there. Very good, very good. That was very good. He might be, he's going too fast. Okay, 100 miles an hour. I, this, this is, this is not kilometers, guys. This is 100 miles an hour. I don't think that was water. I just think it was just a uh it's probably like a sealant for that spot. They like they patched it up and with the way the sun hit it, it's shiny compared to the rest. Um literally what he went he gave it a lot of throttle in the turn and lost some traction, gained traction, was able to keep it up. That's it's, it's as simple as that. Um there I I don't know any of the rest of the information. Maybe it's like, you know, the his track tires are about to die. You know what I mean? It, it, there could be a lot. But right here, 100 miles per hour. 100 miles per hour. So this is a definite factor in this close call. High speed is a factor of a close call right here. Okay? We have a car coming. We have that blue car coming. This is where we should be in orange stage, but with 100 miles per hour, we're not going to stop in time. There's not enough total stopping distance, so we have to swerve at this speed. So he's not paying attention situation. Well, no, he is paying attention situation. I take that back. He is paying attention situationally, but he's not using his situational awareness to his benefit. It, your situational awareness is going to dictate what speed you can do. So if you saw the, uh, the uh, speed limit and it's supposed to be 65 and we're going 102, then you you saw it, but you chose not to use it. But if you get pushed out, let's see what speed it is. 108 miles per hour. If you get pushed out of your lane and you have to utilize an escape path, that's what you do right there. You move off into the shoulder, especially in this position. You move off to the shoulder. Look how big it is. So look how big this lane is. Now we're going to go to the shoulder. I want you to see how big the shoulder is. Look how big that shoulder. Fifi, veteran crew member. Welcome to the crew, man. I good to have you here. You made the right choice. Welcome, man. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Could have uh, anticipated that car moving across. Yeah, if you're going at a slower speed, you probably could have seen it ahead of time and then not have to use an escape path. So that's what I that's what I see when I see this type of stuff is that if you were going the appropriate speed, you would have been able to roll off the throttle. You would have been able to apply a little bit of brake pressure. And this would have been a non-issue. You would have stayed in your lane. But if you are going at a high rate of speed and you have to swerve off because because of your high rate of speed, who knows what the shoulder has? It could have a bunch of nails. It could have had like a uh, was it a bunch of debris, like a, a, a mattress, you know, whatever. There's a you guys seen stuff on the side of the road? It's insane. You know, tire tread. You could see all that stuff. Imagine hitting that at 108 miles an hour. So. Uh, yes, he was able to utilize his swerving to avoid an incident, but he put himself in that position that he had to swerve. And if he swerved in the wrong spot, I mean, it worked this time, but might not work next time. You see what I mean, guys? Guys, make sure you hit that like button to sign into class. Oh, he hit his head. 
Wear gear, guys. Have fun. Wear gear. Yeah. Truck, 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 truck. Don't get mad at him. This is how you get ran over. Without a permit, that is 100% illegal. I don't think these guys got permits to do that. That truck... That truck, it's like, guys, I want to go. It's a red light for you guys. Why are you all running through red lights? You know what I mean? It's like, I'm going to creep out. If you guys want to treat it like this, I'm going to creep out, and I'm going to make my turn. I'm going to make my thing. This is absolutely stupid. Look at all the people backed up because you guys wanted to be dum-dums. It's perfectly fine if you had a permit to do this, and you had somebody blocking the intersection. Maybe hire somebody to block these intersections. That they, they, There's people out there that do these things. And, guys, don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. If you're going to have a massive group ride like this, I mean, if you want people to watch and look at you, that's why you're riding in town, get a permit for it. If you guys are a huge group and you guys are just going to go race and, and have fun on the mountains, uh, break it all up and have a meeting point before the mountain. You know what I mean? So when I said that this is a good way of getting ran over, there's some people out there that don't care. There's some people out there that just don't care so guys be very aware of that exactly mob mentality kill switch ridiculous Taking the license plate. Dad, 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 I got it on camera. We're good. It was an accident. You fucking honked at him and then you fucking ran into him. It doesn't matter what's going on. It doesn't need to be violence right here. If people are hurt, then call the cops, but there doesn't need to be violence. All right? I understand, but it wasn't on purpose. Maybe he did, but he still didn't hit him on purpose, right? Everybody, are you all right? Are you okay? Can we clear the air? Okay? I, I understand you're pissed, dude. I ride too. I ride too. I understand I mean, how it goes, but you can't be assaulting it. somebody though. You can't be. All right, I did. I just bumped with my helmet. I understand that, but that's gonna throw you in jail. You can't do it. Okay. You got to protect yourselves in this. You're right. But there's no reason to run into there, him. There's not. There's not any reason. You're you fucking honked at him. What are you guys? I know I honked at him because you were sitting in the middle of the road in the crowd. Which one of you Guys, which one of you is this? Which one of you is that guy in the red? That guy right there. That guy right there is extremely level-headed. When I tell you guys when it's not your emergency when it comes to somebody else being in an accident, when I say it's not your emergency, I actually mean it because I want you guys to take a step back and observe and then think logically, think level-headed. It's not your emergency. Those of you that are inside the emergency, and a lot of uh, military, a lot of police, fire, public safety, all these people, everybody understands this, is that if you're inside the emergency, you're not thinking. You don't see the full picture. You're thinking emotionally, fight or flight. If you treat it as it's not your emergency, you can think like the guy in the red. So you have to detach yourself 
from the situation. This guy did an amazing job. I want him in the crew. Which one of you is it? If you're in the crew and this is you, I'm going to give you honorary status in the Discord. Which one? Who who is this guy? Let me, somebody tell me which one of you is that? That is the mentality I want. Are you already in the crew? Where? 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 Come on. Come on. Where you at? Where you at? Where you where is he at? Somebody just said he was in the crew lounge. Where is he at? Is he in the gym? Where is he at? Where? Where is he at? Where is he at? Where is he at? I want, I want him. him. I want, I want him. him. I want him. Somebody, somebody find him. Doubt we're going to find him. Somebody eat a burrito. Somebody sign in. You guys need to check in, sign in so we can get this class going. Okay, so let's watch that again. So I have a feeling the guy in the Dodge that hit him might be a little under the influence. Might be under the influence. I'm going to guess. Now, I'm assuming he's been spending quite a bit of time doing that. It's a smart idea. It's a funny idea. But I don't think those are coming off. You need a screwdriver. It's probably on the inside. Those are like little bumpers. You know what I mean? All right, let's take a look. So riding with your dad, I'm going to tell you right now. Ooh, ooh. If anybody hit my kid and it was like on purpose. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, oh man. Oh man. It is my emergency at that point. It is my, you know, this is what I have. This is what I have. This is what I absolutely love. This is what I love about my family. This is what I love about my family. I hope Nikki's still, still listening, still watching. I sit back on a lot and I think logically a lot. I, I, I treat almost everything as not my emergency, but when I feel like, you know what? I need I need somebody to treat it like an emergency. I need I need I need my little pit bull. I need a pit bull. That's what my wife is. Like, babe, go get him. Go get him. And she she'll get him. And then I could sit back and be okay, that's a little too much. Okay, great. Awesome. Good job. Nikki's my little pit bull. I love it. But if anybody hit my kid, oh I don't think I can handle it. Are you gonna run into me? Are you okay? Okay, so I, I said it's like a it's a funny idea to take that off, but here's the thing, you're still in front of the car and you're gonna possibly get hit. You know what I mean? Um let's go back just a little bit. It let's say it's a green light. Okay, as soon as it turned green, he honked. I hate people like that. It's stupid. So this guy right here has a big issue. I don't know what his issue is, but once again, take a look at uh, a little bit later what he's wearing. Who knows? He might have just came from a funeral. He might have just came from his parents. You know, his dad died or something, or he, his loved one, like a loved one. Who knows? I don't know. So I'm not going to antagonize random people because I don't know what it is they've gone through. So looking back like this, it's like if they honk at you, just do a quick look and then take off. Not a big deal. That would have ended the situation, de-escalated it. We would have never have known who this person was, never have needed all this stuff. But the thing is, we don't know where people are coming from. And this is one of the things that I literally take. It's it's what I do. I don't know what people are, where they're coming from until I talk to them. And the only way you're going to get good information from people in a bad, good, whatever situation is by being kind, by being honest and having integrity. And this person right here, just it, it's it, it's just a fight or flight situation. Once again, just based off of the, the many years, the decade as a firefighter, decade plus as a firefighter, dealing with patients from many walks of life, I learned how to deal with people. I learned how to deal with people. A lot of people don't know that yet, and that's perfectly fine. But so here's the thing: just take off. Don't worry about having to deal with them. Are you gonna run into me? Should have just taken off right here. I don't know why the guy hit him though. It was pretty kind of it was kind of mean. So who's at fault? Uh, the the car driver. The car driver is an absolute asshole. Shouldn't have hit this car. Shouldn't have hit this kid. I'm gonna call him a kid because I'm probably older than him. Shouldn't have hit the kid. Completely agree. But who's responsible for our own safety? Us. So get out of that situation. Law of gross tonnage. You're going to get hurt. Is a mob okay? hit? Ray, are you okay? 
I'm good. See, the reason why I say I think those are like little bumpers, you could barely see, like, it almost looks like the head of a Phillips uh, screwdriver. Or a screwdriver. Uh, Phillips. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Looks like a screw. Looks like a screw on the middle. So it looks like you're going to have to just unscrew that. He was actually a fired valet. Dude, you make it sound so real. I don't know if that's the truth. <laughs> all right. Uh, you guys have asked a ton of great questions. I'd love to answer all the follow-up video. Uh, uh, okay. Well, he says I could use it. So, oh, look, Yami New came out, a new video. Seven mistakes I made when I started riding motorcycles. Ooh, that's interesting. I'm going to probably take a look at that later. So I'm going to go ahead and save this video. Let's just watch it. Riding with dad. I think he was going to jack his plate in case he took off. Are you going to run into me? Probably, dude. Yeah, a photo would have worked great. Now that's theft if you try to take that. Dad, 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 I got it on camera. We're good. It was an accident. You fucking honked at him and then you fucking ran into him. If people are hurt, then call the cops, but there doesn't need to be violence. All right, you all he right? He fucking ran into him with I, the I don't understand, but it wasn't on purpose. Everybody yeah, he didn't honk at him before he did it. Maybe he did, but it still didn't leave him on purpose, right? right? Everybody, are you all right? Are you okay? Did we clear the air? Okay? I understand you're pissed, dude. I ride, too. I ride, too. I understand how I mean, it goes, but you can't be assaulting somebody, though. You can't be All right, I did, and I just bumped with my helmet. Dad came back. But that's going to throw you in jail. You can't do it. Okay. You got to protect yourselves in this. You're right. But there's no reason to run into there, him. There's not. There's not any reason. You fucking honked at him, dude. I know I honked at him because you were sitting in the middle of the road in a You all right there, Bubba? I'm good. I'm just trying to keep you all from going to jail. Huh? Nope, sorry. You all right? I like that guy. I like that guy. I like that guy. That was that was good. That was good. The guy in the red double checking, rescuing another rider. He's a he he's a smart dude. I like it. Yeah, Nitwit, I I that's why I said I think he might be the under the influence that first. That's a good I I pick up those things really easy. He slurred his word the moment he opened his mouth. I think it was about right here. He slurs his words pretty bad. And I'm assuming it's under the influence, but here's the thing. Some people have that speech impediment. So that, that could be a normal thing. Dad, 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 I got it on camera. We're good. It was an accident. That sounds like a speech impediment. But that's the thing is, once again, it's a possible factor. We don't know, but I think that's a speech thing. I think that's a speech thing. Yeah, it almost looks like he either came from a wedding or came from something, maybe had a bad day. Salt, how you doing? That's right, Grimbeard. <laughs> oh, shit! <laughs> I missed it. What the... <laughs> look at that, look at that, very good. Oh no, he fell off.
Do we know why this guy fell off? I think it's pretty self-evident that somebody hit him and he fell off the bike. I think that's what caused this crash. You know, why did it happen? Well, we're racing and if you ain't rubbing, you ain't racing, I guess. All right, all right. Whoa, tailgater. Just move off into the right lane. This guy's turning right, you're good. Move off to the right. Watch out, watch out. Ooh, look forward, look forward, look forward. Oh, you just caused a problem, dude. That's a good point, uh, Yakub Bor. That's not a race, it's a track day, no inside passing. So this is why it's really good to have people that, that go to tracks. I, I have zero interest to go to a track outside of the learning possibilities. I don't, I don't, have, I don't feel the need for speed. So I don't, I, I don't wanna go to a track to, to go fast. I wanna go to a track to practice high speed maneuvers. So that's actually good information, man. Thank you. What's that about? just is so much noise the rest just like mountain biking stuff matt we need we need something better than this guys uh, I, I, matt, matt get, get, get a video while i'm getting this ready and i'm talking to the crew real quick guys we have the best damn online motorcycle community in the world i i keep saying that i keep saying that but it's the it's the truth so tomorrow is going to be members only chat. It will be 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. I, so 24 hours from now, we're going to have another stream. I stream three days a week, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Tomorrow we'll be streaming members only chat. That means if you're a member, you get to chat. If you're not a member, you still get to watch. You still get to hang out and have a good time. But this is where the members get to hang out. There's a bunch of clouches and recliners over there. Yeah, yeah, there are. Hey, what are you doing? Whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 no. If you get the high score, you have to put Dan in. You can't put your name. Uh, but guys, we're going to be going back to the class. I want to make sure everybody's having a good time. We're making, I'm playing with my little rock form pop socket mount. Anyways, join the crew, click that join button, be part of the crew and become a smart rider. Let's get into it. All right. So what happened there? Lots of traffic. Watch out for this car. Watch out for this car. Watch out for this. Okay. Okay. Not an issue. Not an issue, dude. You know how to open your eyes? You know how to open your eyes? Yeah, the angry bikers, whatever, people versus bikers, I, I like to see it because, because remember, guys, uh, ego can really change the dynamic. The attitude can change the dynamic of an incident. You know, it's like angry people. Well, maybe they just made a mistake versus bikers. You know what I mean? So that's why I like watching these videos. I usually turn away from the ones that are actually angry people because there's no real need for that. Yeah. Car turning in front. Okay, watch out. Matt, you suck on that one. <laughs> I'm just kidding, man. You're good. You're good. You, you're good. Thank you for uh for 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 bringing these videos to us so we could learn. You are absolutely a necessity, and at no point would I ever fire you for screwing up. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!
Oh! California. You didn't see me at all? I didn't see you. I heard it from you. You didn't see me? I'm sorry, man. Use your mural, man. I heard a cop. Man, I want to see what happened to the cop. So when people say you didn't see me, you didn't see me, use your mirrors, use your mirrors, use your mirrors, it's, it's, come on now. We all know, we all know, we all know. Uh, is this a drivable lane? Because like there's a lot of people parked on the, on the curb, there's, there's parking meters right here. Is this a drivable lane? Somebody help me out here. So we see the car, right? Does it matter if the car sees us? Do we see the car? I think that is what I think that is what we need to be focusing on, right? Does it cuz at the end of the day does it matter if if the car sees us, the car driver? Cuz really it's at, at the end of the day the driver it does it matter or does it matter if we see them? We see what they're doing. Think about that. <laughs> Cop was saying non issue. Where's the cop? I want to. You didn't see me at all? I didn't see you. I heard it from you. You didn't see me? I'm sorry, man. Use your mural, man. Watch out. Watch out. There's going to possibly be a path to travel violation here. I can already see it. I can already see it. This looks like it's almost a head-on. Whoa, 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 whoa! What are you doing, dude? Go! 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 Done? Okay, watch out. You're, you're closing your space cushion. Somebody's gonna come out in front of you. Your lane is moving. Your lane is moving. Your lane is moving. Your lane is moving. Watch out. You can't see around the turn. Possible. There he is. Alright. Path to travel violation. I'll stick that on camera, what an idiot. Yeah, I was tooting him, not you. As you came past, I was like... Upset... Absolute idiot. You're right though. Click that join button guys, click that join button, become a member today. Hey, you want to stop FaceTiming? You want to put the phone down? Put the phone down! It says stupid, crazy, angry people versus bikers. Who looks like the stupid, crazy, angry person in this situation? Right? It's like, it's not even worth it. Thank you, thank you. In front of me, you can go behind them. And tell cops, cause I just want to be an idiot around me, man. Heart. Okay. Let him. Let him. Let him. Just because you're on the 
right when we say cut people up, you know? Right, well, filtering's legal, mate. Read the highway code, knobhead. Samantha, I'm trying. Samantha, I'm trying. And I, and, and I, I'm looking at all the stuff right now, too. Let's take a look at that real quick. So, yeah, this car driver's way out of line, but where's this other motorcycle rider coming from? So that car driver's way out of line, shouldn't have done that. Uh, in other cultures and other countries, this happens quite a bit. So those of you that ride in areas like this, I'm pretty sure this is like a non-issue to you. It's an issue here in the United States, but it's probably a non-issue to you. You're so used to it, which sucks. You shouldn't have to. Are we all in the intersection here? What's going on here? Oh! I like the editing. Ezra, welcome to the crew. Whoa! Hey, 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 hey. This guy. Ezra Arneson, welcome to the crew. It's good to have you here. Woo! Oh shit, whoa. Gotta do what you gotta do, man. Jesus, is this the reason? Just be careful. Be very careful in this spot. Careful, careful, oh, careful, 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 careful. Okay, now go. Double parking, illegal. Is that the... <laughs> yeah, take your time, dude. Alright, so the thing that we... I mean, this happens. It happens in town. The thing that we got to watch out for uh, when it comes to the safety aspect of all this, uh, I don't care if you guys want to get on the... Whatever, I don't care about that. The one thing I... Oh, the one thing I care is that we get into this space and it's, he's like, why is it so crowded? This is the thought process that, I, that you guys are typically going to have when it comes to something like this. Why is it so crowded? Ask yourself that. Why is it so crowded? Was there an accident? Was there somebody injured? Is, are all these people stopped and then left their vans because there's a gunman or a naked dude trying to give people hugs? We don't know. We have zero clue about what's going on in front of us. All we know is that there's a bunch of vehicles stopped. So what we're going to do is go into this, and this is an orange stage. We're going to be going into the scene. We're going into all this, being extra, 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 extra careful, okay? Jesus. So he did his investigation. He got himself, okay, it's this, this van that's double parked. Is there somebody in the van? We don't know. Let's go ahead and check again. Is this the reason? You see how he stopped, paused, goes forward, stops, pause, go forward? Very good. So right here, I'd be concerned if the van started taking off and the bus driver's like, finally, the bu the van took off, so I'm going to keep going. So this is why I said, be very careful going in between this spot. If you're going to do it, you got to do it right away. You got to just, no hesitation, just do it and, and get out of there. Because who knows, this van right here in the front could take off, then the bus could take off, cut, uh, cut you off, and you're going to get hit. Mother. And then from there, you guys do whatever you want. To be quite honest, I don't, I don't really care. 
If you want to get on the sidewalk, get on the sidewalk. Just realize it might be illegal. <laughs> How could people like this? Oh! Oh, sarcasm, man. I love it. So, guys, situation awareness is not just for the motorcycle, and this is what I've been saying this whole time. You can do it while you're walking. You can do it while you're biking on a bicycle. You can do it on your motorcycle. You can do it in your car. You can do it while... Uh, I do it when I'm walking my dog all day, every day, every, every day, all the time. Okay? People like this. This guy's riding a bicycle. He's riding a bicycle in the bike lane. Now, we're going at a pretty slow speed. So we have a lot of time to make judgment calls. We can hang out in yellow zone for a lot longer than we can on a motorcycle. Same thing when we're walking. So the slower you go, the more time you can spend in yellow stage, but then also sometimes the more you have to stay in orange stage because I'll, and I'll, and I'll explain it right here. So this is going to be that yellow stage moment and we're about to transition into the orange stage. And why are we going to transition into the orange stage? We have a blind intersection. We got all these hedges. We can see the tire markings. We can see all that stuff right here. I don't know what's around that. And I literally, when I'm walking my dog, I'm taking it nice and slow and getting a good grasp for it because my dog walks in front of me. So I have to obviously be extra careful because I don't want her to get hit. So whenever I get to a situation like this, and just use the dog walking as an example. If I get to a situation like this, I'm going to go ahead and pull on my leash just a little bit to have her closer to me. And we're going to continue on with our walk. She has no clue what's happening. She's like, this is great. I'm outside again. Well, my owner is amazing. Gives me treats and food. This is awesome. So she doesn't care. So I'm going to pull her close a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and keep my eye on, on this open area. I'm going to look down, make sure I don't trip on a, on a rock. I'm going to look over here. I see a car pulling out. Good thing I was paying attention. I didn't have my dog way out front. So that is what I do when I'm walking. And no go, no good guitars. Where do we have some good guitars here in the firehouse? Yeah. Hey man, don't worry about it. I know that's what your name is, but we got some good ones here. So uh, that's what I do when it comes to uh, walking my dog. And if you're gonna walk or ride your bike, do the same thing. You see that right there, red stage. Now, red stage is just application of the brakes in this situation. We're not having to swerve. We could just slow down if we really want to. But I would stop and just be like, what's up? What I'm laughing so much about this is that this guy has the worst attitude ever. The worst attitude ever. I'm gonna let it play. I'm gonna let it play because I want you guys to see how dumb dumb this is. And then the response is so beautiful. Oh. The response of the cyclist is amazing. Let's watch. Oh, you're going to push the button, Matt? Yeah, it's up there. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's up. Yeah, you got it? Okay. Oh, stop that, man. Give me the eye for you, silly. Oh, so I can't hear you. What did you say? I'm a bit deaf. I'm a bit deaf. I didn't hear what you said. I'm out of way. I'm going to go work. Well, so do I. No, babe. Sorry, I, I missed that. What did you say? Sorry, I missed what you said. What did you say? Did you just call me a knobhead? <laughs> I gotta get to work. Well, so do I. And then he starts moving, and the guy's like, you knobhead. And then he stops like, wait a second. I didn't hear what you said. I want to make sure I heard what you said. Did you... What? Uh, do, uh, <laughs> this is great. This is great. All right. I gotta look like this. I gotta look at this angle. Blind spot. Blind spot, blind spot. I think we all know the answer to that one. Bersabar, ini darah, ini adalah dugaan. 
bersabar moral bang Rexit itu tadi Woi oh, woi oh, woi oh. Guys, let's see if we can get five more YouTube Astaga. members. Let's do it to it. <laughs> okay. We got five now. Okay, let's yeah. get five more. It's $2 okay. a month. Let's try it out. See if okay, you like yeah. it. Huh? Okay, you got it. Okay, okay. 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 Sorry, yeah. Nice of him to check. I like that. It was an accident. <laughs> nice of him to check. Too close, dude. Space cushion, space cushion, space cushion. She did not even look. Way, way too close, dude. They back up on you. You're screwed. Open your eyes next time. Come back now. Whew. Blind spot. Holy crap. Did not see that one coming. Whew. Did not see that one coming. What's going on? Oh my gosh, there's a, oh my gosh, there's a bunch more. Oh my god, there's yeah, I'm so glad we're not watching this one. Holy crap, that's the whole Moto Madness, come on, man. This one's an old one, let's watch it. Oh what a day! What a lovely day! So, so guy oh Aldra Melek welcome to the crew guys we're at six new members for today I don't think we're gonna hit the goal but you know what we've had such an amazing streak perfectly fine but if you would like to become a member click that link in the chat Streamlabs just uh said and and uh, Adra Melek just became a DJ crew member click this link if you want to join too but I also post a link right there guys it's two dollars a month you get access to the crew lounge if you notice right here in the regular lounge we have, you know, everyone, Mega Dink, Woolies, Happy Unicorn, everybody here, Ali from Dubai, uh, the crew lounge right here, Zoker, M MH1983. Everybody is a crew member having a good time. Guys, the Discord is absolutely 100% free, so if you just want to get in the Discord and see what it's like, go ahead and do that, and then from there, if you feel like becoming a crew member, do so. It's $2 a month. It's a huge support to the channel. It pays for all the burritos that we have. I'm sorry. Really big rolled tacos right there. We got some donuts. Make sure you click that sign in sheet or sign in on that sheet by clicking that like button. Oh my gosh, I'm all over the place. Way too early today. We got 30 more minutes left in the stream. Let's see if we can cap out at 10 new members. We're at six. We got 30 minutes to do so. Remember, we're trying to build a huge community. We're trying to build a different culture around motorcycling outside of these angry, 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 angry people. So guys, if you'd like to do that, click the join button 
or just subscribe. How about that? Subscribe. Subscribe is free. Join the Discord's free. Come on over. Oh, Whoa. there's his head. Yeah. Shh. I just got demonetized. His head's on the ground right there. His head's on the ground right there. Nah, Jixer07 guy 11. I love me some donuts. John Filing, you finished a ASM? Nice, dude. You're gonna you learned a lot, I bet. His head's right here. Yeah, go ahead and pick up his head. Secure it. Secure the helmet, guys. Secure the helmet. Secure your helmet. The helmet doesn't do you any good if, if it's not on your head. Let's watch it one more time. Bobo! Real quick, got to give a shout out to anybody that's a YouTube member, especially if you get promoted. Bobo, man, the cruising, just got promoted to senior crew member. You're amazing, man. Thank you so much. Ah, Andrew. Join Discord. Whoa. Mm. So... Look where he came from. Look where he came from. Look at the mirror. Look at the mirror. On the far right. Look on the look on the far right. So he's in the mirror right there on the far right. We're in the lane. We're kind of in a staggered formation. He goes to swerve right. And hits. So he went for the gap that was closing instead of the gap that was opening. Uh, go to the gap that's opening. How do you tell which gap is opening? Well, I mean the driver's already going forward in their vehicle So to the right is gonna close to the left. It's gonna open um, The driver is not going to pop it in reverse is like super quick and get out of the way if anything They're gonna accelerate even more or just stop So your best option for anything like this especially if you see something like this is swerve to the left And that's what this guy did and it's not what the other guy did Very painful, very damaging. So that's a tough one to avoid in terms, and thank you for bringing that up. It's a tough one to avoid in terms of swerving, fundamental skills aspect, but once again, ask yourself, why did this person decide to do a U-turn? Why did this person get in this area in the first place? Why are we crashing into them? What could we have done differently? How could we have done it differently? And th that's why we go over these after action views. So let's see when the moment we could actually perceive this vehicle. When does that pattern pop up of that side of the vehicle? Remember guys, look for that pattern. Look for those things. Look for it. There's the pattern. There's the pattern right there. Look how far we are. At this point, roll off the throttle, apply the brakes. Roll off the throttle, apply the brakes, figure out what's going on. This is orange stage right here. You see the side of the vehicle. If a vehicle is going to go in their lane, if they're going to go into this lane right here, they're not going to turn that far. Okay, the only time they're going to turn this far is if they're going to go into your lane or this lane or all the way over here. That is the only time that's going to happen. If this person wants to go straight in this lane right here next to my head, their body, the body of the car is going to be completely different. It's going to be almost straight because they're in the lane already. So if you see the side of a vehicle, they still have more to go. If they still have more to go and the next spot is your lane, that is a possible path of travel violation. So if you see this pattern, just see the side of the vehicle. Possible, 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 possible. Slow down, slow down, slow down. Orange stage, orange stage, orange stage. Get ready to do something. 
Now it's definite. So his choice of red stage maneuver is horn. This is why I say it's a, a wasted movement. He's also applying the brakes. He's got a passenger, so you have to be even care more careful. Lots of issues. This rider wasn't paying attention, maybe just following the rider up front, maybe just following. We don't know. If we boil it down to it, look for the pattern and, and slow down. Practice your swerve. There's his head. Does he dead? Light. Oh, shit. I remember this one. I think he got really hurt. No! No! Dude, don't move. Don't move. Don't move. You alright? Yeah. Don't move. Go! Get out of here! Hey! Oh my god, are you okay? Go! Get the ambulance back up, back up. over here! Hurry up! Hurry up! Hurry up! Hurry up. All right, dude, just stand on All right, what happened? Where? Where you hurt, dude? All right, just stay still. Stay still. Uh, stay still. Stay still. Hang tight. Hang tight. You got it. You got a cop coming? Front of EMS headquarters. Yeah. Uh, all right, just stay still. Stay still. My shoulder. All right, all right. Can you breathe? Okay. I can breathe. All right, where are you bleeding from, dude? I see I'm some not blood. I'm not sure. All right, just bleeding from still. his knee. Bleeding from his knee. Do you want to try to slide him real quick? Let's try to slide him over. We have to do double. No, I don't want you to move. We're gonna move. Hold on, I just trying to take this window. Moto C CKC, welcome to the crew. It's good to have you. No, 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 to this. You know what I mean? So it's a long shot. Okay. Can someone please confirm that? Please? That what? That the per the car turned in front of me. None of us here, we're here for so long. But don't worry, you got your camera? We have people that are of conscious in the middle of the conscious, man. It's got obvious deformities to the left arm and right leg. We got a GoPro on. Can we take that? Is it blinking red? Yes. Blinking red. Yes, it has a square on it. That's fine, this one's Where was that mounted? On your head? On my face. All right. Uh, 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 okay, I was just going to cut it. Is there a strap? Yes, or you're strap. not cutting the wire, right? No, I'm cutting the strap. Thank you. So blinking red means it's recording. Yes. You got the GoPro. Okay, good. How do we turn it off? Uh, top button. Top button. Oh, There's a lot. There's a lot that's going to go into this one. Um, I think I'm going to end the stream on this one. I got 20 more minutes left. I can easily spend 20 minutes on this one. Easily. Easily. Oof. Etienne, there it is. Okay, no more spamming. All right, so we have EMS already here, I'm assuming. It looks like a, a fire chief of some sort. They do have medical supplies. They do have medical training for the most part. And I'm assuming the reason why he's parked on the side is that there was an incident previous to this. Okay, I was looking at that light. I was thinking if that was smoke or not. Okay. All right, man, I'm going to mute you. How about that? I'll go ahead and mute you for a little bit. Oof. This is why. This is why we do this. This is why we go over after action reviews. This is why we, we pay attention. This is why we, we track or track. We, this is why we, we uh, uh, train. This is why we practice. Tractice. I was going to say tractice. Uh, this is why we do everything we do. This is why we're smart riders. This is why I talk about rescuing other riders. If you were watching this from behind your buddy, if this is your buddy about to uh, T-bone a Jeep and you're behind and you witness it happening, are you able to help? Are you able to do what you need to do? Are you able to self-rescue? Are you able to... What is it? Once if you're the one driving the Jeep and you totally missed the person 
and and you and they t-boned you do you have the training do you have what it is that you can do to save somebody's life do you care honestly do you even want to do that if not that's perfectly fine but if you do seriously join the discord uh subscribe to this channel take an accent scene management online class we just saw somebody here do one i completely forgot your name i'm so sorry i know you are a member here uh please say again that you took an accent scene management class and let people know what it is that you learned you are going to be better off this is why we're doing it, guys. This is why you need to practice your skills. This is why you need to practice your situational awareness. You need to see the moment this type of stuff happens. You need to understand this is a very bad low visibility at night. This person can't see you. You're on a small bike, very small headlight. You're not moving, so it looks like you're further than you are. It, 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 there's a lot of issues that go into this. The main thing is intersections, guys. If we scroll back just a little bit, intersections, orange stage, orange stage, orange stage. It doesn't matter if... You don't have to pick apart every minute detail about what the driver is going to do. If you can go into orange stage because you see an intersection like this, that means you are prepped and ready. Your perception reaction time has been cut down immensely. So now you haul, all you have to do is act. You only have to act once you get into this position. How do you act? That's up to you. That is with your training. That is what you do. You go out and you practice your swerve. You practice your emergency braking. You practice your slow speed. You practice your high speed. You have to practice, 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 but you also need to see what's happening well ahead of time to make sure that you can actually utilize the skills that you've been practicing so hard to get. You need to be able to see the hazards in time. We hit a vehicle. Okay. Everything failed. Situational awareness failed. Fundamental skills uh, failed. Now we have the A portion of Smart Rider. Okay, the S is situational awareness, basically. M is maintaining physical skills. A is acquiring personal protective equipment. R is rescuing other riders. T is teaching and mentoring other riders. If the SM, the, the situational awareness, and the fundamental skills fail, hopefully you have full gear. Hopefully you have impact protection. Hopefully you have a helmet. Hopefully you have everything, 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 everything. Because this is extremely important. If everything fails, you don't want to be, thank you, Danny Duran, awesome, rookie member, go clean the toilet, thank you very much. But you have to constantly practice, 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 because if you fail, your gear needs to save your life. Mitigate as much injury. So we passed that chief on the way up here. And the people yelling is saying, get the EMTs, get an ambulance here. They're yelling. They did what they had to do. Somebody, instead of calling 911, which you want to point somebody out and say, hey, call 911. You do it. You call 911. This guy took it upon himself and did the first chain. It, it, it's the chain of, of I can't even think right now. I, I'm getting a little bit hyped up. I'm, I'm getting on this soapbox. There we go. Now my head's cut off. But the thing is, it, it starts that chain of reaction of where EMS starts happening. People start happening. The hospital gets notification. You get ready for surgery. All these different things. But it has to start with calling 911 or getting help, the next level of help. And this is what this guy's doing. Dude, don't move. Don't move. Don't move. You all right? Yeah. Don't move. Go! Get out here! Hey! Oh, my God. Are you okay? Go! Get the ambulance back up, back up. over here! Now... We don't know what that person that's screaming is saying, but later on you're going to hear the EMS on the radio talking to dispatch, which is going to either either they're talking to dispatch or talking to the hospital and saying obvious deformities to the right shoulder and then the right leg. Obvious deformities means that body part is not in the shape it should be, and the only way you know that is with education and, and training of anatomy and physiology, or it's just pretty damn evident that – this guy is going to have a broken bones, broken everything, and that's why he's in pain. That's why he's talking about his shoulder. So listen about it. Maybe that's what the guy sees, and he's screaming out, panicking. He's part of the emergency now, but he's doing what he needs to do. <laughs> hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. So his hand right there, I mean, it, just the way the angle is of the camera and all that stuff, it just looks like it's not functioning. Alright, what happened? Where where you hurt, dude? The shoulder. So the shoulder injury. Okay. Later on you're gonna hear that he has a leg injury, leg deformity. So the pain is really in the shoulder. He might feel a little bit of pain in his leg, and it's gonna be deferred pain basically. So you're gonna learn all this stuff in accent scene management. Stay still, stay still. Uh, stay still. Stay still. Hang tight, hang tight. You got it, you got a cop coming? EMS headquarters. Yeah. Uh, all right, just stay still. Stay still. My shoulder. All right, all right. Can you breathe okay? I can breathe. All right, where are you bleeding from, dude? I see I'm some blood. I'm not sure. All right, just He's stay still. He's bleeding from his knee. 
been from his neck. Stay still. My shoulder. All right, all right. Can you breathe okay? I can breathe. All right, where are you bleeding from, dude? I see I'm some blood. I'm not sure. All right, just bleeding from his neck. Bleeding from his neck. Bleeding from his. All right, where are you bleeding from, dude? I see I'm some blood. I'm not sure. All right, just bleeding from his neck. Bleeding from his name, his neck. Uh, this guy's doing a good job with questions. Can you breathe? Breathe okay. All right, just stay still. Stay still. My shoulder. All right, all right. Can you breathe okay? I can breathe. All right, where are you bleeding from, dude? I see I'm some blood. I'm not sure. All right, just bleeding from his name. Bleeding from his name. Do I to try to slide him real quick? So there was a passage of time. Now we have EMS on stand or on not standby. We have EMS on scene. Uh, this woman right here that's that's handling all this stuff more than likely is a very experienced EMT or is a paramedic controlling the scene. And the reason why is she's not sitting here saying, hey, man, how are you doing? What's going on? Hey, you know, what's your name? The reason why that's not happening, there's not this type of etiquette, or it's not etiquette, it's this type of bedside manner of, hey, let's go, let's be friends. The reason why she's going straight to it, not talking to you, getting shit done is because she sees there's injuries. She sees, oh crap, we need to get this guy to the hospital. Surgery is the only thing that's going to save him. Oh, it's from from his knee, bleeding from his knee. Okay, okay, thank you guys. From his, that makes more sense. Um, which is not good. It's not good. Uh, but she's going into it. She's getting into it. She's like, this is what has to happen. We're going to make it happen. And there's no nonsense here. This The only time an EMT, EMS, whoever, jumps into this mode of no nonsense, we're getting shit done, is when something is bad. This is when we fall back on our training. It's like we're not we're not dealing with shit, dude. We're not dealing with your with problems. Like you know, if you say that you know, call my mom or whatever. It's like yeah, okay, we'll do that. But we need to make sure you survive, and we're gonna do what we have to do. Let's get you in the ambulance, get you to the hospital, get some surgery done. Try to slide him over. We have to do double. You know, I don't want you to move. We're gonna move. We're gonna... See, I don't want you to move. We're gonna move you. I just trying to take this wound out. John filing, yeah. No, 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 to this. You know what I mean? So it's a long shot. So they're they're working on the fly. So they have equipment, and they're like, you know, this is not the equipment that we need. We're going to utilize this equipment in a different way. And they're brainstorming, they're troubleshooting, they're doing a great job. I absolutely love seeing this. I want to be a part of it. That's why I'm talking like this because I just feel like, ooh, I feel like being in it. I want to be back into it. I feel ready. It, it, seeing it kind of brought up some some bad emotions. But here's the thing. I, I live for this. I live for helping somebody. It's like I want to be there with my hands, you know, in it. I want to be in it. Can someone please confirm that? Please? That what? That the, per the car turned in front of me. None of us, None of us here will ever show us. So I'm unsure if she's creating a sling and swath. Uh, that looks like a triangular bandage. Um, could be for the shoulder injury. Okay, so left arm, right leg. Okay, I was a little bit wrong on that one. So he says. But don't worry, you got your Conscious and alert, never a loss of consciousness. And the only way they're able to figure that is by asking questions. So they, it sounds like they already did their assessment. They completed their assessment. Now they're working on, on things and then reevaluating their assessment based off of new findings by cutting clothing and new chief of complaints, all these different things. So he's, he's relaying this information to the hospital. He's probably getting doctor's orders for something. So the person that's actually talking on the, on the radio or on the phone, more it sounds like the radio, it's gonna be some. It's probably gonna be the paramedic, the person that's in charge, or the person that is gonna be uh, handing off the patient. So I'm assuming that the person right here is just a very well experienced EMT, maybe two paramedics, who knows? And uh, he's saying there's uh, alert. What do you say? Let's see. But don't worry, you got your have people that are conscious and alert. Like there was never loss of consciousness. So he's conscious and alert. If you guys watch my last Friday's video, I talk about alert, verbal pain, unresponsive. You'll learn that in accident scene management. Alert is when you're completely alert, like how I am right now. I'm able to focus. I'm able to talk. Squirrel. I'm able to do as many things as I want. You know, I can answer questions. Now, if if I had a head injury and you guys asked me uh, like a question in real life, you say a word and I'm like, huh, what? And I'm not really paying attention. I'm, I'm only alert to verbal. I'm not completely alert. Uh, painful stimuli is by somebody, you know, pinching me and I respond, oh, what's going on? Like trying to wake somebody up from a sleep and they're like, huh? When you touch them, that is a painful type thing. 
And then unresponses if they are literally not paying attention. They're just either unconscious or conscious, but like staring and nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. That right there is unresponsive. So when he says alert, and, uh, alert not loss of consciousness, they already did their assessment. And this next part. So obvious deformities to the left arm and right knee. That's giving the hospital a heads up of, hey, we're going to have to do some surgery. So let's get the surgeons uh, on, uh, call them in, get them ready, get everything prepped. Uh, we have a motorcycle accident, chief complaint of possible left shoulder injury, or I'm sorry, chief complaint of left shoulder pain. It's an obvious deformity to the left shoulder. He does have a deformity to the right knee, but right now the patient is not saying that there's any pain there. If in or you can even get it quantifiable. The patient is saying it's a 2 out of 10 pain, but the, uh, he has 10 out of 10 pain on the left shoulder. There is obvious bleedy, uh, blood loss to the right knee, but it is being controlled with bandaging. Uh, we are going to place this patient in C-spine uh, precautions by using a backboard. Uh, we will be transporting the patient uh, lights and sirens, uh, code 3 to, uh, let's say, Banner Hospital or whoever it is I'm talking to. So the hospital uh, ETA will be 5 uh, to 8 minutes. Uh, any uh, any other orders? You know, you could say something like that, and then the the doctor would say yes. Um, go ahead and push, blah blah blah, morphine. I don't know. I'm not a paramedic, so stuff like that. You got a GoPro on? Can we take that? That's here. Here's the thing, guys. Here's the thing when it comes to that. This is a cop doing something good. Like, well, not good, but he's he's doing he's 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 doing a good job to to take something from you. If you say yes, if you say yes, you literally just gave him the rights to your property. So I mean, that's up to you. It's up to you. It's up to you. Typically, he's gonna have to get a warrant for that, right? Typically, he's gonna have to get a warrant for that. So be aware of that. If a cop asks you, hey, can I search your vehicle? And you say yes, you just gave up your rights. You also gave up your rights to the to the GoPro. Who knows when you're getting it back? It's evidence now. I, w I would keep it. I would keep it and say I will cooperate fully with you, officer. And I'll share the video uh, once I am of able mind. Just yeah, something like that. You know what I mean? Is it blinking red? Yes. Blinking red. Yes, it has a spoiler on it. Where was that mounted? On your head? On my face. All right. What do you want to I get distracted quite a bit. Is there a strap? Yes, or you're strap. not cutting the wire, right? No, I'm cutting the strap. Thank you. So blinking red means it's recording. Yes. You got the GoPro. Okay, good. How do we turn it off? All right, we got three more minutes. Sharp turn, sharp turn, sharp turn, too wide. Going straight into the ditch. Road rash up everything. Oh man. Yeah, no problem, Kyle. Then I can do bust it to the back, yeah. Yeah, it seems like we're at we're at the end of the class, anyways. Yeah, no problem, Kyle. Uh, didn't really come for the EMS info. That's perfectly fine. That's perfectly fine. Uh, part of the live streams is uh, what I see, I talk about. Um, part of the Smart Rider system, the, uh, it literally look at, look at right. It's on the podium. Smart Rider, the R portion is rescuing other riders. So I understand a lot of you guys don't want to do that part. You guys are more interested in the motorcycle. Um, training and stuff. Uh, I do have a video coming out this weekend. Very interesting. It's going to be training. Um, we have uh, the past three weekends parking lot training. We have situational work training on Mondays and Fridays. During the live streams, if we have a medical scenario that we can go over, I definitely will. But no, I appreciate uh, your feedback, man. I really do.
but part of the training that I put out is some of it is medical. So, and live streams are, are more so, you know, in per, it's almost like a classroom guys. We're in a classroom right now. We're in a classroom. We're in a beautiful classroom. Guys, if, if you want to get credit for today's class, you have to click that like button to sign in. I see 238 likes. There's 364 of you in here. So some of you guys aren't going to get that. Uh, yeah, I'm still streaming, Scarlett. Still streaming. Yeah, 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 yeah. But guys, we hit eight new members today. Super excited about that. Thank you guys so much for becoming YouTube members. It's $2 a month. It helps out the channel quite a bit. We do a lot of this stuff. Uh, we do Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Tomorrow, we will be streaming at 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, but it will be members-only chat. So if you are a member, you get to chat. If you're not a member, you still get to watch and have a good time. So if anything, you can just kind of sit there and just kind of watch and see what's happening. But guys, if you want to participate uh, when we're not live streaming, when we're not in class, when we're just having a good time, we're just you know sharing beautiful ideas with each other and talking about parking lot practice, sharing bikes, you know the pictures of our bikes and all that stuff. Join the Discord. We have we have a ton of people on the Discord, guys. You have no idea. We have a ton of people on the Discord. This is the Discord right here. It is awesome. So if I if I click that link right here, this is what it looks like. This is what the link looks like. So in the chat, this is what the link looks like. We have 1,000 people online. Look at that. 1,021 people online, 3,953 Discord members. You are absolutely invited. I'm already in there. I'm already in there. So it's like, I, I can't even do it. I can't even do it. It's on your phone, everything. Guys, join up click that link it is absolutely free i'll be seeing you guys around this is live too this is live i know i i love to keep i would love to keep streaming i would love to maybe in the future uh we'll have different stuff to talk about but two hours of accent scene management man that's a lot that's a that's a ton uh if you are a youtube member patron or even a Twitch subscriber, link up your Discord, link up your YouTube or whatever platform you, you did that on, and you get access to the Crew Lounge. You see how Potato, Delight, Peter K, you see Binagun, you see all these people. Blade Holden right there. They are all members. Rach M grabbing the chairs. Thank you, guys. You guys, see, that's the beauty of this. So if you guys don't know, after every class, we got to pick up the chairs. Smokey9610, Pierce the Biker, how you doing? We have to clean up all the chairs. We got to pick up everything, put the classroom back together because tomorrow it's going to be YouTube member only chat. But here, Israel, welcome. What do you guys feel like for uh, for tomorrow's stream? What do you want? Uh, we're going to clean up all these burritos. What do you guys want? What do you guys want? You want bacon? And, you, what do you guys want? Let me know in the in the crew lounge what you would like to see in the crew lounge for tomorrow. Patreon is for, it's gonna turn into the bike giveaway, guys. We're gonna give away a CBR 300R with ABS. Getting everything situated. Patreon, that's what it's gonna turn into. It used to be like YouTube memberships. YouTube memberships now has taken over. Samantha, I'm going to get one right now. Honest, honestly, I'm going to get one right now. It sounds so good. I'm going to I'm going to check. I'm going to check my uh my stuff real quick. <laughs> ZXNR. 